What's up guys, I'm gonna jump right into Blender because we have no time to lose today. So we're in Blender, but the first thing we gotta do is hop over to Chrome, type in Russian Village Boys to put on some hard bass techno music so we can work twice as fast. Now we're gonna hop right back into Blender. As you can see, I've got an espresso machine and a stock Blender, no special settings. We're on EV. First, we're gonna set cycles, turn on GPU, change the tile size for the rendering to 512 by 512. Then we're gonna hop over to preferences, go to system, turn on CUDA or optics, depending on your graphics card. First, we're gonna create a floor plane, but we're gonna make a circle instead of a plane. We're gonna go to edit mode with tab. We're gonna fill it with F. We're gonna open the shader window. We're gonna open a UV window. And now we're gonna create a material. We will call it floor. We're gonna delete the principal shader. We're gonna add a mix shader. We're gonna connect it to the output. We're gonna add a transparent shader. We will add a diffuse shader and mix them together with a gradient, but not any gradient, the spherical gradient. So don't forget to change that. We're gonna use the UVs to control the gradient. So hook up a UV node. So next thing we need is UVs. But first I'm just gonna change the diffuse to red just so I have a debugging color and I can see what I'm actually doing here. So now we're gonna go to the top view with seven. We're gonna unwrap it with project by view. We will press G X minus 0.5 and G y minus 0.5 now we can just scale it up with s until it looks nice and now i will change back the diffuse to white and now we've got a diffuse color only in the center faded out towards the edges i'm going to turn on the global light and next we're going to add some reflections so just create a glossy node mix it in uh, with the diffuse just a simple mix shader nothing fancy here now we've got a simple slider to control the reflection. So next we will add a camera. It's very important to center out the camera. So don't move the camera or rotate the camera in weird ways. Keep it as centered as possible and definitely don't rotate it. If you do anything, don't rotate it. We're gonna use uh, 80 millimeters here. Uh, you can use 100, but 80 is quite common. It depends on the client. Now we're gonna hop over to the camera settings, go to composition guides. We're gonna turn on a diagonal center or normal center, depends, and thirds. And now we can position the product a bit better. So I'm just rotating it by hand until it looks good. This is called the three quarter angle. So it's a very typical angle. Now we will center out the camera onto the handle. And what we will do next is tilt shift the lens. So this is also very popular in real product photography is tilt shifting lenses because you get this very clean stylized marketing look. Uh, now we're gonna turn the global light off, press control B so we don't render the whole scene. Uh, now we're gonna create a new 3D window on the side so we can set up the lights a bit better. So we're gonna create an area light, drop it in, rotate it. I'm just gonna like fly through this. So just move it to the side, flip it the right direction. So flip it 180. So perfect. And now basically just tweak it by eye, but roughly position it where I positioned it. It depends on the product, but it's always roughly along X. So now we're just gonna copy and paste this light source, uh, drop it to the other side. Doesn't have to be perfect, but kind of perfect. And now uh, I'm making another light. This is called the key light. So left and right is called a rim light or a kicker light or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm making a kind of a top light or key light. Um, just a simple square area light. Uh, now I'm rotating it with the shape because I noticed on the top of the Nespresso machine, the light flow looked a bit better this way. So I'm copy and pasting the angle of the product to the light source. So it just goes along the top uh, quite well. I turn on the global light again. This is also just by taste. Uh, now we're also gonna turn on the color management to either, like any contrast, but I'm using high contrast here. Uh, it's also personal preference, just by look. Um, so next we're gonna hop over to the shader again. Now we're gonna tweak the reflections that we set up until it looks good. I'm also doing this just by eye till it looks good. So it looks good to me. And next we're just gonna render it out. Once it's rendered, we're going to go back to Blender. We're going to hide our floor, go to Film and the Render Settings and turn on Transparent Background and now just render it out. So it's going to render really quick. That's why we use two samples. Now drop everything to Photoshop. So the main image and our mask. 
the mask, we're going to control click, so hold control, click it, then we've got a mask. Then we're going to create a mask on the main rendering, copy and paste the main rendering for backup purposes, delete the mask, delete the mask we rendered, and now we're going to drop in a solid color. We're going to use white in this case. We're going to go to the mask and basically just paint in a little bit of the reflections into the mask, just until it looks good. And that's pretty much it. And next, I'm just going to join all layers for this purpose. Like I said, keep a backup. Uh, go to the camera raw filter. And now you can color grade. What I usually do is a bit more contrast, uh, some texture, and some clarity. But this is also personal preference, personal taste. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but this is how I do it. Then you press OK. That's it for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. And see you probably Sunday. Goodbye.